Elder Geoffrey R. Holland, Apostle of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, joined Baroness Emma Nicholson from the United Kingdom's Parliament at leading international think tank Chatham House in London, England. Elder Holland called on global organizations, governments and faith groups to boost their efforts in responding to personal and family crises suffered by refugees and those internally displaced. In the past, charitable institutions have provided much needed, honorably needed and used financial support, medical treatment and other physical needs for a host of refugee victims, all of which was needed and will be needed for a long time to come. But we now understand that we must look to spiritual and emotional needs as well. The kind of people who help with refugees and with dislocation need to remember that faith and, uh, and uh, moral conviction and personal identity is, uh, is an essential need and uh, people won't be complete without it. We must preserve their faith because in the end, uh, it is their faith that will save them. Mental health and psychological support is a critical part of the overall healing plan, especially for traumatized women who had been kidnapped and repeatedly abused by ISIS. Our partnership has enabled success story after success story of these girls who've escaped or been bought out, or have arrived back home, as it were, no real home, but a camp. Nonetheless, in spite of the fact that they've been absolutely crushed almost to extinction, that the human spirit has almost been quenched, we find that little flame inside them. We've managed to nurture it and bring it back again. And we've got some true success stories, and they will stand up and say to themselves, I'm whole again, I'm me, I can now do something, I can help others, I can run a little business, I can earn a living, I can have a family. This is really wonderful, and we're so happy with that. So at the moment, we are providing 35,000 psychiatric consultations a month. The interesting part to me is what has been achieved over the last three years. We've actually changed our approach from, from the beginning of the disaster when we were providing shelter and food for people who have recently been displaced. But now it's much more about primary health care. Uh, Amar and LDS Charities over the last three years have built uh, four primary health care centers uh, for people that would have no access of any kind. Those health care centers provide mental health consultation for people who have been recently liberated from their ISIS captivity. There are vocational training centers, uh, and, and also not just those, those physical needs, but a concentration on emotional and spiritual health. And as an example, LDS charities recognized in the camps, there are Yazidi elders who wear a special kind of ceremonial clothing, and they didn't have any way of renewing that clothing. And so LDS Charities, a very small project, went out to buy fabric, hire a tailor to make those dresses in the prescribed way so that the people can have access to their spiritual connection. And for people who wear significant clothing in that way, we understand what that must be like. And so we're always looking for ways, and we've found very significant ways of helping people who have been in crisis not only have physical consolation, but the consolation of their faith and their religion and the freedom to practice that religion. We would really like to thank Amar Foundation and LDS Charities uh, for the help that they're providing the ZD people with. Uh, as a nation that is still under a continuous genocide, we need help from uh, different agencies and charities and the help that they're providing, as I said, especially for female survivors, is quite important for us. So we really appreciate that help and I, we hope that it continues and it expands to other camps and other areas where Yazidis and non-Yazidis are in need of such kind of help. Canon Dr. Edmund Newell believes that those of different faiths should work together more to benefit those in need. We need, as communities of faith, to better understand one another and also to share our common humanity in productive ways. I think this is the way forward through, for interfaith relationships. It's about mutual understanding and seeing the common ground where we can work together to, to, um, to make the world a better place. In any place in society, your profession, your school, your family, your community, you be the one to stand up. Stand with people that are being oppressed. We do that because we're all brothers and sisters. Whatever our beliefs, political and religious, 
we still are family under the same God. Stand up with people who are being oppressed.